Hey guys, I just got finished reading your discussion board questions about uh, is uh, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, do they worship the same God? Um, some of you might uh, have never seen you before. Some of you guys might have, um, but I'm your teacher. <laughs> I'm Miss Khan, and this is a very um, impromptu a response to this discussion board uh, because I think it's an important discussion board and the question is posed to you for a reason and we're studying world civilizations the first part of world civilizations and history in and of itself is the story of human beings as you'll notice through the course if you haven't already um, history encompasses sociology and psychology and economics and politics and it definitely um, encompasses the the concepts of religion and religious practices you'll notice in my feedback that i say yes the god of the jews the christians and muslims are is the same god because it is now, uh, that might be controversial and that might upset some folks, but you need to know the truth about this. And also in that feedback, I discuss how religion is man-made and it is a way that we express our faith as opposed to just faith itself. Because faith is very emotional. Faith is very... Um, it, it goes to the very heart and core of who we are and our connection to God. And that's, that's something that is an intangible. But then how do we, how do we reflect in the way that, or express the way we, um, believe how we, um, how our faith manifests itself? And that's where religion comes in. And religion, the creation of religion, those essential rituals and dogma and liturgy um, through the Old Testament, the New Te Testament and Quran, the holy scriptures of Islam, um, those there are actually more similarities than there are differences. And also we have to look at these texts um, with um, a different view because of um, not with regards to how to worship God and express our belief in God, but who these texts are written for. And, and this is... Um, this is where we get into, I don't know how comfortable I am with uh, this understanding. I don't believe it. And, and I just want you guys to know, um, I'm not here as your teacher, as your instructor, as your professor to say the way you believe is wrong. But I do believe very much that our behavior and how we look at other people has a bearing on how we act not just uh, towards one another, but as global citizens, as community partners. And, and our misjudgment of people is extremely important because that misjudgment or misunderstanding can lead to events that hurt others. And the reality is that um, we're really more alike than we are different. Now, uh, Judaism is the very first official religion um, that is on this tree. So it goes Judaism, then Jesus comes, Jesus is Jewish, and Jesus, the followers of Jesus become Christians. Um, and a hundred years after Jesus's death, we have the book of John, and the book of John is really the deciding um, text that makes Jesus the Christos, the Christ. Um, and so 
Uh, so we have to move from there because Matthew, Mark, and Luke look at him as a human being who is Jewish and they're all written for their particular followers. So, um, and that might be upsetting for some people who are Christian. All of the books, uh, the Gospels, as are presented in the New Testament, are written for the people in their time, um, not actually for future generations, but for people in that time, and they're written to specific groups of people, the Jews, the Greeks, they're, they're really create, creating Jesus, and they're, they're describing Jesus as um, uh, not always the Son of God in a way that he is God also, but that um, his special relationship with God as the Son, as the uh, speaker of the good news, he is who brings the good news to the people and also is the sacrificial lamb. Here we are at Passover, and uh, right now, in this moment, April 8th begins the first night of Passover. Passover is the sacrificial one, lamb that uh, we see the Passover supper is the last supper for Jesus. So they're really very close together with regards to their connections. Um, Islam comes much later on, around uh, Muhammad is born in the 600s, we see the rise of Islam, the connection um, of the Arabian tribal people under the banner of Islam. Now, in all three religions, um, God has a connection to human beings. Um, in, uh, and, and, um, it's important to understand that uh, the, well, there are a couple of things. Number one, the Quran, uh, the, old, the New Testament and the Old Testament, all three um, are about relationships between God and human beings. Um, they are both, um, they're all, all of them um, have, uh, uh, um, they're all hypocritical in some ways. Um, there's, it's about human beings. So human beings, we are, um, we walk every day in our life making choices. Some of those choices are good choices and some of those choices are bad choices that can hurt other people. I mean, we're living that even right now, right? With uh, this COVID-19, are we all social distancing? Are we staying home? Are we doing the things that we need to do? And if we have to go out, are we adhering to these things? Because in the back of our mind, we know uh, that there are people who do not realize that they have this uh, virus because they're asymptomatic. But, um, you know, do we really uh, feel it? Do we really understand it to where we, we act on it? So we have choices even now. Um, are we deli being deliberative in our actions or not? And all three of the holy scriptures for Jews, Christians, and Muslims are asking those questions. The, it is a conflict of what it is to be human. We are walking contradictions, and as a result, uh, so are so are stories within all three um, holy scriptures. So uh, nobody is better than the other. We all can learn from the scriptures of good versus evil or right versus wrong. Um, but you can't, you, you cannot say one is worse than the other. Uh, and that's an important point because someone was saying in the uh, that um, you know this is warlike people that Muslims are warlike people no more warlike than Jews or Christians. How we throughout the whole history of humanity and these major religions, let me just say, no one, not any one of these religions, advocates that you lie cheat, or steal. Zero. 
Zero, zero. No, uh, none of these religions advocate that you murder people outright. Murder, take their life. Um, as a matter of fact, the Ten Commandments doesn't say thou shalt not kill. In Hebrew, it is thou shalt not murder. There's a big old difference between killing and murdering. You know, killing, if you have to kill somebody in self-defense, that's a whole different story than murder. Even the law courts recognize that. So we, we have to look at it a little bit differently than maybe we've learned in Sunday school or in Hebrew school or at, um, in, um, when we've gone to uh, learn our liturgy from our Iman. So we have to look at it from that perspective. Um, and why? Why do I ask you to do that? First of all, because you're in college. Um, and my job, part of my job, and all your teachers' jobs, is to um, teach you information and give you information that actually may make you feel a little uncomfortable. But you need to swirl it around in your brain. Let it percolate a little bit before you make a decision at the end of the day. The other thing that I think is very, very important is that, um, and this goes on as we go forward, but um, there are differences uh, between part of the differences of why we look at all three peoples, people who are Muslim, people who are Jewish and Christian a little differently is because institutionalized legal um, or laws have been created that uh, throughout history, since the rise of Christianity and then Islam, that have actually barred certain groups from being able to do certain things. So there is this idea that Jews, Jewish people, um, are wealthy and Jewish people are in the jewelry business or in, you know, merchants or whatever, and it's true. And why, in some ways, is this true? Well, it's, in, it's true um, at the very core of things. It's not in the 21st century as true, but this idea uh, remains. Um, a common term when I was growing up, Jew it down, you know, which means haggle, this and, uh, haggle the cost down. And that's really derogative because anybody would uh, want to pay um, a more reasonable price for anything. Um, and yet this concept is, is related to people who are Jewish. Well, let me just say, um, throughout history, as Judy, Jews began to spread into Europe, um, the Christian church, which is the Catholic, Roman Catholic church at the time, in the Middle Ages, at the time, not right now, at the time, would not allow Jewish people to own land, to be farmers. They were not allowed to be craftsmen. They couldn't be um, own a, uh, like, a, uh, like an inn. They couldn't uh, be in a crafts guild and be um, tra in the trades. That was illegal, okay? So what could they do? Well, they were merchants. They were traveling merchants. Boom, there you go. So in that concept, if you have that concept now in 21st century, that is a concept that, that has been ingrained in you and your family for hundreds of, excuse me, hundreds of years, and that is a wrong concept, okay? So while we don't live with that right now, that's part of, that's a big deal, okay? Um, that is uh, uh, part of the institutionalized um, um, religious um, uh, um, um, scrutiny and, um, um, and, de and demeaning Jewish people. And the whole idea of the Passion Play, where Jesus is uh, given to Pontius Pilate, and, and all that, and that the Jews are the ones who did it, they're God killers. Um, two, two things with that. Number one, that comes from Germany, and not from the original um, whole concepts. And number two, um, think about it. Even if it were true, even if it were true, uh, 
Isn't that the whole purpose is the resurrection as we get to it this coming Easter Sunday? Jesus came to earth in order to be the Lamb of God. Well, somebody had to, there had to be a story behind that. So, you know, um, so that's important to remember as you, if, if you don't, if you think that Jews killed Jesus, um, some people might not, but it is, it is, there is a theme here that's allowed the Ku Klux Klan and white supremacists to maintain their stance. And I'm here to debunk that. The other thing is that in Islam, um, Islam is, um, they don't like women and it's all about jihad and they're going to kill people and they destroy and deface property. And in the 21st century, that's right. There are some, some small groups of Islamic extremists, small groups of Islamic extremists who claim or that claim that they want the new Islamic conquest and they live by Sharia law and which is the law of Islam and that it is warlike and that it is murderous and that is it defaces others, uh, you know, other ideas. And I, I'm here to tell you that that is not true Islam. It's not. Islam is about surrender. That's what the word means, surrendering to God. And Muhammad is the prophet of Islam. And Islam, the, the people of Islam, the people who are Muslim, they are from the lineage of Ishmael, Abraham's first son. Now, um, some people said that Christianity took uh, information from Islam and developed. No, 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 no. Islam learn from Judaism and Christianity. Muhammad was a traitor. He was out and he met with people of many different faiths. Um, and, um, and I think that it is important to understand that. The other thing is that um, uh, while jihad is about conflict, it's about an internal struggle. The internal struggle that we all have about whether or not we're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. You can also say that in Buddhism, Buddhism is about being mindful of your actions, being mindful of what you're doing. Um, isn't that what we should all be doing right now? So that's important. Um, all, and and uh, two last things that I think that are kind of uh, important to, to talk about here before I head off. And one is that um, in Islam, um, uh, it's all, it is destruction. Um, I want you to know that the original Islamic conquest in the 700s, six, late 600s into 700s, uh, going into Spain at ending at 752, um, uh, was the last, uh, the extension of the, of the conquering of Spain. It was reconquered in 1492 fully, the Reconquista, right? that leads to the age of exploration. But under the under Islamic rule, um, Jews, Christians, and Muslims all lived very well. It was considered, there's 500 years considered the golden age of Spain, where you have the uh, literature and um, the height of, of medicine and mathematics and astronomy. And I mean, just, it was a fantastic time. It was a beautiful, it, it, it created um, peace. It was very peaceful. And it brought, instead of destroying the things um, that it uh, learned in um, the old, what were the remnants of the old Roman Empire, um, the, the streets, the, the concrete, roads, fresh water, sewage systems, all these things, they, they took it, they synchronized it, they brought it in. They didn't destroy it. And then they brought it with them everywhere they went. And, and so if you went to Spain and it was 850, and you, 850 AD or 900 AD, and you were in Europe, you were living in a mud hut and you stunk, you thought that bathing was something that you couldn't do because it would open your pores to disease. You, um, so you never, you know, once a year, you might've gotten a bath. You didn't brush your teeth. You wore one pair of clothing, one thing all year round. 
you had a, a hut that had poop on the south side of it. You would put the poop on the south side from your animals, and that was your heat. Because as poop decays, it creates heat. And so it would be on the south side of your house, and that's the primary way you teach your house. If you had a really great house, you would have two floors, and you would bring your animals in, and it would, they would sleep on the, on the mud floor at night, and you would sleep in the upper part. Um, it would be open. Um, and if you cross the mountains into Spain, it would be like Tomorrowland. It'd be so different than what you could ever imagine. And part of that was because of Christianity. Part of it was because Christianity. Now, in, in because Christian people were living then after the decline of the Roman Empire, people were, uh, there were invasions and invasions and invasions from tribal peoples. And so uh, the, there was a decline in, um, in the way people were living. And um, yes, yeah, Charlemagne was, so amazing great but Charlemagne he was he was an amazing dude that's why we call him Charles the Great um, but uh, but once he died um, or areas that were not part of that Frankish kingdom mm -mm, no man no no it was tough it was really tough and you go to the mountains in Spain it was like whoa it would be you would have blown your you know like avatar head bah, right off your your you know and your skull would you know so we can't, you, in order to really understand what's going on in the world today and claims by Al-Qaeda um, and uh, the Taliban that they want to be the new Islamic conquest, and new caliphate, well, my gosh, um, if you take that on face value, you think all Islam is bad and you can't. That's not right. You, you to be an educated a college educated, formally educated human being, you have to know the difference. Um, uh, and, and there's so many millions of things to talk about, but in this short period of time, there's one last thing I think I really want to say, and that is that um, with regards to women, women's rights, they're all three, all three value, all three major religions, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, um, do... Uh, be, you know, believe women have rights and roles. However, they all three um, are not nice to women either. Um, in Judaism, in Judaism, in the law, women have all sexual rights in a marriage, for instance. All sexual rights in a marriage. Her husband is supposed to sexually satisfy her sexually satisfy her. And how often he has to do that is based off of what kind of job he has. Now, anybody ever want me to tell you about where to find this in what's called the Mishnah, I'll be happy to show it to you. So women have sexual rights, and yet ultra-Orthodox men wake up in the morning and the first prayer they say is, thank you God for not making me a woman. Very contra contradictory. Then you have Christianity. Now, Christianity believes because of Eve eating the bite of the fruit of the tree of knowledge, all human beings have fallen from grace. She's the reason. And so women have to be controlled. I would say that Christianity probably has the biggest stronghold over women's rights uh, than either Judaism or Islam. And in Islam, uh, women are considered, um, uh, if, if a husband takes another wife, he has to always treat all the women equally. Um, and, and he has to value his women. He has to protect his women. Um, all three, well, Judaism not so much, but within Christian and Islam, women may, need to defer to their husbands. Um, and some super orthodox religious groups, women do as well to men, Orthodox Jewish groups. Um, but, um, uh, and, and all religions, uh, pretty much all three of these men can hurt women. Um, uh, but, uh, but still you can't say that one is worse than the other. You can't do it. Uh, not, not legitimately.
you can do it and you can say it if that's what you, you know, doggone it, that's what I'm going to believe. But if you don't understand all three religions, really, then, um, then, you know, your arguments that you are going to make about women's rights or about trade and money or um, war or any of those things, uh, if you don't really have the, the truth and understand the, the history of them, uh, the religious history, not Sunday school versions of things, but the religious history of it, the good, the bad, and the ugly, then if you come across somebody who really does know their stuff, uh, they're going to shoot down your argument. So whatever you believe, believe by all means, but don't be ignorant. That's what this, that's what this video is really about. I want you guys uh, to really uh, think about these religions, especially as we go through this t hard time we're more vulnerable as a population. We're more vulnerable um, in a, a, as far as how we think about one another. We should be coming together. We should be understanding each other better. And um, and uh, and and it might upset you to understand that religion is man-made. It's how we express our faith, but it's the truth. Um, um, just look around you. Why are there uh, 200 different types of way to, uh, to practice Christianity? Presbyterian, Methodist, Episcopalian, Catholicism, Church of God, Church of Christ, Baptists, uh, Seventh-day Adventists, uh, Mormon, all that has to do with everybody believes in Jesus Everybody believes in God, everybody believes that Jesus is the Son of God, and everybody believes in the Holy Ghost in some form or fashion. And yet, all three, all of those, not all, but all of those types of Christianity have their own liturgy, their own set of, of songs and, and um, dogma. Um, so, uh, so there you go, it's right there in front of you. Uh, and, um, and in Islam, you have, uh, you have the Shi'i and the Sunni Islam, um, and then you have, but all, both believe that Muhammad was the prophet, and they believe in God and Gabriel and the, the story of Muhammad. And in Judaism, you have ultra-Orthodox, you have conservative, you have reform, you have Reconstructionists, you have, and, and, and all of them believe in God and Moses and the law and the degree to which they practice the law is different. Um, all are welcoming the people, all are hypocritical um, and contradictory um, because it's very emotional to us. And I just want you to keep that in mind. Um, think about it. Um, let it mull over in your head while you're home. Uh, knock it around a little bit in your brain um, and uh, do a little bit more research if you if you want. Uh, but um, but I think that's an important thing for me to get online and say. And there might be some more things as we go forward now that I've learned how to use YouTube better. <laughs> so um, guys, take it easy today. Uh, enjoy this Wednesday. It's going to be beautiful weather. And if you have any questions or concerns. Um, by all means, email me. I'm always available through email. Okie doke. All right then. See you later. Bye.